Good evening, Centre for Effective Living Community. It's Valerie Ling, clinical psychologist, director, founder of the practice. How have you all been this evening? I've only just gotten home after spending a whole day out with a group of teenagers, taking my children and their friends out for a bit of an outing and really just enjoying um, spending time with them and being in the background and listening into the conversations and really just marveling at how you know little people can become uh, emerging adults and have thoughts and opinions that um, I actually didn't know that they had but when uh, they're talking with their friends obviously it all comes out uh, so I'm on the countdown for the last few days of coming live to you daily and it really started to prompt me if I've only got a few more days to speak into the community of Centre for Effective Living, uh, what might be some of the things that I would really like to say. And today I'm actually going to talk about um, an observation that I've had with regards to the inquiries that are coming into the practice at the moment and people um, asking, uh, do you think it's appropriate to come in to see a psychologist to talk about this or I'm experiencing this and I'm not sure whether or not seeing a psychologist is the right thing to do um, or you know whether it would be a helpful thing, uh, could you maybe give me some input? And I thought that's quite interesting um, and I thought maybe I'll come online and actually say a little bit about that. So first and foremost, you don't need to have a referral to come and see a psychologist. Uh, we are open to anybody uh, giving us a call and coming to book in to see us. A referral from a, a doctor is really helpful and useful if you're thinking about getting any of the government uh, re rebated sessions that are available. Um, but you don't have to uh, have a referral. You can simply just pick up the telephone and actually give us a call and book an appointment in. The next thing then to say is, how do you know whether you need to speak to a psychologist or not? I find that if someone has actually asked that question, it's probably more than likely that yes, seeing a psychologist would be a helpful thing. Because if you've gotten to the point where you've tapped into all of your natural resources, so you've, <coughs> excuse me, bounced the idea around or the issue that you're dealing with in your, uh, with yourself, and you're still struggling and you're still stuck. You might have talked to uh, some friends or colleagues or people who know you and just finding that no, you know, they're not, that's not really getting me anywhere. Um, you might have gotten to the point where you've actually um, sat down even with someone that you really, really trust and really, really knows you and it's still not moving. And also you might be finding that it's the issue that you're juggling, that you're tackling, um, that you're trying to figure out or work through. It's also really starting to impact the way that, <coughs> excuse me, you might be, um, dealing with your everyday life. You might not be sleeping very well, you might not be eating very well, uh, you might be finding that you're quite preoccupied and, and losing memory and, con and concentration. And then to the, the point also where you might just not be feeling well, uh, mentally, emotionally, kind of an exhaustion or a kind of a, a disconnectedness even with yourself. So I, I guess generally my impression has been that if someone's asking that question, it probably suggests that yes, um, there's no harm in actually just making an appointment and coming to talk things through because in our first session anyway, we are always going to do an assessment where we listen into what's been happening with a person and then we, we collaboratively with our client in front of us in that session, um, try to map out, okay, so what are the issues? What are some goals that we can work towards? So I just want to give you a rundown of some of the uh, situations that, <coughs> excuse me, we find people coming in to talk to us about. It's not uh, exhaustive or comprehensive by any means, but it just shows that there's actually a range of things that you can work through with a psychologist. So the first is mental health issues. Uh, if you are finding that you being overwhelmed by depression, anxiety, and a range of mental health issues and you have gone to see a doctor and the doctor is actually saying look I actually think that this um, requires some therapy with a psychologist yes that is definitely something that we would um, see our clients for 
There are situations where there may not be a mental health issue, but the situation that the person finds themselves in is actually really causing quite a lot of distress. They could be major life decisions, uh, whether or not to take on a particular major job or whether or not to move countries uh, or whether or not you, you're making some very big life decisions that could impact a lot of people in your world. And sometimes people want to have a confidential space to work through those things. Sometimes people have already talked it out with others, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, but still can't come to a resolution. Uh, that's where sitting down actually with a psychologist can actually help as well, because we have a couple of frameworks that allows us to help people to work through life decisions. Sometimes people come and see us because there's been major change in their world that has caused a lot of stress. So even moving house, um, relationship changes that they might have had, um, a, a loss of a, a relationship or a loved one, these major life changes can also bring someone into our therapy room as they try to adjust and calibrate and, and sometimes grieve uh, that adjustment as well. Uh, relationship, major relationship uh, conflict can bring people in as well with siblings, uh, loved ones, uh, work relationships as well, bring people in to speak to a therapist. And that's where they're finding that there's been a shift in relationships that, that they're actually trying to work out, is it fixable? Is it solvable? Is it a communication issue? Am I being bullied? Is it toxic? That can also, relationship issues can also bring someone in to see us. Then there's health issues. There are some health issues that correlate with uh, impacting on, on our mental well-being. For example, chronic pain, um, chronic fatigue syndrome. Some medical conditions also come with a correlation of mental health issues, so, such as diabetes, for example. Um, that's something that we see quite a lot of in our practice as well, and we're that's usually a managed care situation. You might have your health professionals, your medical professionals working with you on the physical and the medical side of things. <coughs> and you might have a psychologist on your team to actually to support you in with the, your emotional well-being that comes from the impact. And then one more thing that popped into my head as to um, the types of issues that we see in the, the, with clients is life stages. Life stages bring about different impact, emotional adjustments to people's world as well. For example, you might be an empty nester now. Um, we see uh, uh, parents coming in who have young adults who might be moving out of home um, or, you know, young people going through very stressful things um, and their parents watching them go through it and trying to work out, you know, I'm feeling so stressed. Someone once said to me, you're only as happy as the happiest child that you have, no matter what age they are. Um, you could be retiring very soon. You could be retrenched. Uh, you could be getting married very soon. That's another common one that comes in. But basically life stages, as people move from one stage of life to another, there comes change in the way that they start to perceive themselves and they start to perceive their values and priorities. And it might be causing some kind of a disruption to the way that they're going about their life. Sometimes feelings of emptiness or vulnerability comes up. And that's another reason why uh, people could come to see a psychologist. So that by no means is an exhaustive list, but certainly I hope has started to prompt uh, you to think about maybe if there is something that you're dealing with and you hadn't thought that seeing a psychologist could be a useful thing, that you might want to actually give it a, a try. Please feel free to visit our website, www.effectiveliving.com.au, especially our blogs, because that really gives a taste to the range of situations and issues that we see in the practice. Have a nice day.